Hey there, it's Ash from All Things Dentistry, and thank you so much for joining me. Um, my passion is to share those hints and tips of dentistry, and today I have such an amazing guest. It's Dr. John Rhodes from the UK, and he's an endodontist, uh, and he's like, got a huge following on YouTube, and I wanted to reach out to him. Without further ado, I was going to go through his bio, but I'm going to put that up because he's got some really cool CBT, CBCT cases he's going to share with us, and without further ado, Dr. Rhodes. Thank you very much, Hassan. Uh, great invite. It's, uh, I follow your channel and uh, there's lots of exciting stuff on there. So I hope I can add to that with uh, today's presentation. We're going to be looking at CBCT. CBCT images uh, are so useful in endodontics and something that we use all the time. And so I'm going to run through four cases where it's been absolutely crucial. So let's have a look at the first one. Brilliant. Okay, so the first case, uh, the oh. mandibular right first molar has been referred for root canal treatment. And you can see there's some impacted molars behind it. And the question is, has the distal root got resorption on it? From the radiograph, you'd think yes, and that this case, this tooth can't be root filled because obviously the uh, resorption on that distal root would make it very difficult to clean, shape, or repair. So a CBCT can show you a lot of things, and uh, that's what we did. We took a preoperative CBCT to check whether the distal root was resorbed. Now, do you have a machine in your office or do you refer out for this? How does that work? Yeah, we have a little machine uh, next door to my office. So we just pop in there with, there's two of us at the practice and we share the machine. So we can um, take scans uh, before treatment and consultations and during treatment if we need to. So if we have a look now at the axial view on the bottom left here, can you see the arrow? Absolutely. Okay. So if we have a look now at the axial view, you can see the first molar is here. And we're interested to know whether the second molar, this one here, which is lying horizontally, is causing any resorption on that distal root. So using the um, CBCT, we can work our way down to the apex of the tooth, and here you can see that the crown on the second molar is getting very close to that distal root. There is a little bit of resorption here, just surface resorption, yeah. but as we go down to the apex, you can see that the tooth doesn't actually breach, or the resorption doesn't actually breach the root canal. So this is a good case uh, that we can root fill and we don't have to have that tooth extracted. Now, another thing we can see on here, just whilst we have a look, because obviously we take a really good look at these CBCT scans, you can see that the mesial root actually has three canals. There's one there, one here. Oh, look at that. One there, and another one here. And in the distal root, down towards the apex, we can see that the uh, root canal bifurcates, so it goes down as one, a thin ribbon shape, and then divides at this point into two separate canals. So when we're doing our root canal treatment, we've got to be mindful of that. We're going to have three orifices on the mesial root and a distal root that bifurcates in the apical third. But it's all good fun, and we'll be looking forward to seeing the 3D result when it's filled up. Yeah, absolutely. It makes, it makes it so much easier to know what you're doing beforehand. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, years ago we used to really look forward to waiting for that, the, uh, the final radiograph and the 3D fill on the final radiograph. But now we can get an inkling of what we're going to achieve before we even start the root filling. And that's so exciting. So the mandibular left first molar has been referred in for root canal treatment. And we can see there's periapical periodontitis here. But we're not quite sure what's going on here. Is there some caries in these leaves? What's this? And so we can take a CBCT and just assess this because obviously around the neck of the tooth, there's another problem that sometimes occurs, external cervical resorption. And this can mean that the tooth isn't treatable. So we'll have a look at the scan now and uh, see what that revealed. So this is, this is a lower resolution scan, but it still shows you absolutely everything you need to see. We're trying to get the radiation dose as low as possible but to give us all the detail that we need. So let's have a look. Here we can see the kind of longitudinal view, the X-ray type view. We can see that lesion that we saw in the periapical radiograph here, but now it's a lot more clear because we're only looking at a thin section. But let's look now at the axial view again. The scatter you can see is caused by metal uh, 
restorations and things, you do get artifacts on the CT, and that can sometimes make visualization a little bit more tricky. So as we go down, we can now see this lesion appearing, and this is external cervical resorption. You can see it starts from the outside of the tooth, and it's resorbing inwards, encompassing the uh, mesial canals there, and then extending down the root of the tooth. So sadly, this tooth is probably not restorable, not uh, a tooth that you can root treat successfully. If we look at the view from the longitudinal angle, you can see it again. That resorption enters the tooth at the neck of the tooth and then disappears down the root. And this is quite common in uh, external cervical resorption. So this tooth will probably be uh, be replaced with an implant instead of uh, trying to attempt root canal treatment. Yeah, absolutely. What, um, you know, I've seen, I see this in cracked teeth more and more and more all the time. And I know they talk about um, trauma, orthodontics, but what's, you know, I mean, how does a molar tooth get traumatized? And is that actually, for these types of external cervical resorption, is that actually a cause? Well, uh, there are a lot of um, causes that are being muted in the, in, the, in the dental press. And trauma is one of them, orthodontics, of course. But more recently, they've been looking at viruses and feline viruses because cats are very prone to external cervical resorption and can lose lots of teeth through that process. And it may be that it's a virus that's actually causing um, the resorption. The immune system obviously attacks the tooth to try and get rid of the uh, resorption and then the process uh, destroys the tooth. So there's, uh, there's some new uh, advances in the uh, diagnosis and the etiology of external cervical resorption. Uh, are you a cat person? I am actually. Oh, sorry, I was going to crack a joke, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's, a, here's the case number three. This tooth was referred in for root canal retreatment of the mandibular right first or second premolar. And the GDP had had trouble because they'd uh, been unable to instrument the canal to the apex. And they'd seen this area apically, which they thought was periapical periodontitis. And this really gives us uh, an indication of something that you want two or three good indications before you root fill a tooth. And uh, I don't think a vitality test was possibly done in this case. Of because as you can see, this isn't periapical periodontitis. This is something else yeah. in the lower mandibular region. So let's have a look at the CT. So here's, here's the CBCT of that case. And uh, this is the premolar tooth where the root filling had been attempted. And on the periapical radiograph, we could see a radiolucency. Mm -hmm. And the general dentist assumed that was an abscess. But in fact, when you look at your CBCT, you can see there's healthy bone around the apex of the tooth. And this is actually the, the mental foramen. So this is the exit for the um, ID bundle in the mental region. And you can see that on the scan. If we go down to the apex of the tooth and then beyond the apex, you can see the mental foramen just dipping in here, adjacent to the tooth. And then there it is. Oh, it's so great. That's the ID bundle running through the mandible and then exiting through the mental foramen. And what you can see on the radiograph, because the plate's on the lingual side there and your beam comes through, and what you can see is not a periapical lesion, it's not an endodontic problem. It's normal anatomy. And so whenever you want to do a root filling, you need to have at least two good indications that the tooth has actually got an endodontic problem before you start root canal treatment. So in this case, I think maybe it was a case of misdiagnosis. Anyway, the tooth could be re-root filled quite safely. Obviously, you don't want to extrude any materials beyond the apex. Yeah. But uh, all was good in the end. So in this case, I mean, were there symptoms from this patient? I guess there must have been some symptoms that led the dentist to believe there was an abscess on there. But I mean, but, uh, like after, so we've got kind of like a pulpotomy thing now. Yeah. I mean, there's no, would you, you know, would you retreat this or is this kind, because it looks calcified. Yeah, we, we would definitely retreat that. Um, the coronal restoration wasn't that good either. Okay. So, um, And also the thing I found, you know, having done endo for about 25 years now, you find that often what you see on a radiograph isn't always what you find clinically. And you can see something that looks really sclerosed on a radiograph that may actually have pacing root canals. They're just full of uh, material. 
mm. like uh, the cryptic pole and what have you. So sometimes you can be uh, pleasantly surprised. That is a good. So idea. yeah, this people's root canal retreated, uh, and there wasn't any problem getting down to the full um, full length. You know, I actually have a question here. So, say for example, in this case, because we are we're close to the the uh, mental foramen, and the bundle yeah. is right under there. Are you going to change your working length? depending if it's necrotic, vital, and if you're adjacent to structures like this? Yes, there are a few things I would. I wouldn't um, prepare large apically, so I wouldn't go, I'd try and keep the uh, apical size as small as I can get away with, so no more than a size 25. Yeah. And I probably wouldn't use pumping um, techniques to flush the irrigant up down the root canal because I don't want to extrude irrigant through the apex. Yeah. So yeah, I would probably change. I'd probably use some ultrasound instead because with ultrasonics, the uh, natural flow of the irrigant tends to be coronal rather than the Oh yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you telling me that because this—I mean, this can is a, this can happen in the sinus. This can happen anywhere. We're using these extremely yeah. caustic. Uh, irrigants that, uh, you know, the last thing we want is to have a patient safety incident. Absolutely. Absolutely. And indeed, the other time that this is really useful is when we're doing somebody going to do apical surgery on a tooth like this, we'd always have a CBCT. Yeah. Also, in typical cases, we use CBCT because trying to do a root end filling on that is going to be very tricky. There's a high chance that you could damage the, uh, the mental nerves there. So what would you do in that case? Would you just do this extraction? Would you re-implant? Re would you attempt to do yeah, too many re-implantations, but um, you could just resect the, resect the root higher or extract the tooth. Yeah. You know, if the patient doesn't want to take the risk, then just extract the tooth, have the tooth extracted. Finally, number right. four. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so an area of endodontics where we always use um, CBCT is trauma. There's a couple of things that can be uh, easily misdiagnosed from a radiograph. One is supposed horizontal root fractures. Horizontal root fractures are very, very rarely horizontal. And the other thing is you uh, can't pick up any resorption. So if the tooth's got resorption uh, on, say, the palatal aspect of this tooth, you won't pick it up on a radiograph. And that could have a bearing on the uh, prognosis long term. So we always take CBCT scans of trauma cases. This is the classic um, appearance of a horizontal root fracture. You get this oblique line, and normally uh, it runs higher on the buccal surface than it does on the palatal. Oh. At this point, you can see that there is a little bit of bone at the fracture site, but you're not really going to be able to root fill this. And there's only, there's only kind of two ways of doing it. You either root fill the uh, portion that's still left in the uh, jaw, and then bond this back on with a, with a fiber post. Yeah. Or what we did is we root filled the portion here and then extruded this with orthodontics cool. and then restored it afterwards. But if you look at the uh, CBCT, that's enlarging that, you can see that's the main fracture line. But this tooth has had multiple little fractures and you will never ever see that on a radiograph. No. There's no way. So this looked like a a classic horizontal root fracture, but they rarely are. It's normally oblique and they can extend right up on a usually quite a nice jagged line. Uh, so they're higher palatally than they are buckly. The other thing is resorption. And if you get resorptions, uh, like inflammatory resorption, perhaps the tooth hasn't been root filled uh, soon after the trauma, you get inflammatory resorption. And this can uh, destroy the root. And you, again, you won't see that on a radiograph. So I think it's really key in trauma cases. And certainly if the trauma isn't recent, to take a CBCT to check for those two things because it will have a bearing on your treatment outcome. Wow, that's some great advice, actually. I've never actually, uh, this is new. For some reason, I don't know why it's new to me, but it is. And I really appreciate sharing this one because that's, uh, that's not something we yeah. normally would do. Just take a PA. Yeah, well, we used to take vertex occlusals and all that yeah. kind of stuff. But really, CBCT uh, brings a whole new um, vision to the, to the case. You can see things that you just won't pick up on a radiograph at all. And I think that's really quite important because these are valuable teeth. They're often in children, so they need to be retained until they're 
at least old enough to have an implantable longer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. So that's my four cases. Wow, I really appreciate that. That is just absolutely in such a short period of time. I mean, we just you, you're able to like cover so many things and just give us so much more information on these just cold beams. And I really appreciate that time. I really no do. Problem.